can see it's already been painted up, fitted. Uh, what I did is I just threw it on, made sure that these bottom bolts lined up. And I thought if they line up good enough, anything else I can modify uh, as I go along. So I've got it painted, and that was probably been a couple of weeks ago now. I've been busy with other things. And I might make a pub on first just because the floor was bent on the old chassis, the one but rear really cross member dipped down and on the new shaft I got from Richard that comes up above the mounting point of the tub. So the tub was like a banana I was catching on there, so I had to take all the slats off the back of the tub, straighten them out, uh, straighten the floor out as best as possible. I don't really want to get a new tub or spend much money on that. Uh, so yeah, spent probably six or seven hours getting that straightened out, get it fitted. But that's on, bulkhead's now on. Uh, it's still loose, I've got a line of door gaps. But I'll try to fit a few things and as I'm going through and find a few more things, so I'll go through what I've found so far and uh, hopefully that'll conclude everything. No doubt I'll find something later on, but yeah. Okay, so as you can see, I've not fitted an awful amount on the engine so on the bulkhead so far. See, I've got the fuel filter housing here. That's supposed to sit up on the bulkhead by here to, I think they're 5 8 rib nuts. They're missing, so I'm going to have to find them. And then there's little things like on the heater, there's the bottom hole missing, should be one in about here. So I'm going to have to drill that at some point, get the heater fitted. Uh, these holes here for the throttle linkage, both sides I've had to drill them. Bigger, I think they were just filled with a bit of galvanising. Uh, same again, these holes for this throttle. I've uh, got a hole missing on this support here, so I'm going to have to get that put in. Uh, what else have we got here? This all lined up fine, fitted okay. See it's just loose now. I've got two holes to drill to mount the uh, bracket for the clutch hose. So I've got the tape on there ready to drill it. Uh, coming around then to the inside. You can see here missing a hole should be for the uh, switch for the high beam. Get another hole to add and then round the gearbox tunnel I've got holes to add to add the tunnel itself. Uh, inside then I've not really done too much, I've not spotted anything yet. But one thing I will say is I've had a trial fit up of the inner sill which fits in along here and you can see we've got these two plates that come together and this lower one's just a bit too low. This side I might be able to just get away with it, just have it pressed tight, but the other side it comes down even lower than that and I can't even get the inner sill mounted in the correct position. So that I'm going to have to just take a slit off with the angle grinder, re-prime uh, it, paint it, all that. Uh, coming back around the outside then here, uh, we've got this bracket here which holds a support rod down to this other bracket here that sits on the chassis and uh, what I found is that this length here is the same as the old uh, bulkhead this length here I've got an extra centimeter and what that's doing is pushing the angle out a lot more so there's no way I can get my rod to line up from there down onto here it's ending up out here somewhere so I'm going to have to modify that rod, get that to fit. It is a bit annoying because 10 mil is quite a lot. You're not going to have a tolerance that big on it. So if someone's maybe messed up a bit on the dimension of that, you can see here where that comes down far too low. I can't get the inner sill in there. Here you can see the hole missing with the heater. And then, yeah, a few other little bits. There's holes missing for uh, little brackets with a harness and everything. Uh, I can add them myself. The only difference is, is on the original bulkhead, you had the twin wall, so you could put a self-tapper through, and it would not be visible from the inside. With this bulkhead, however, it's all single skin, so instead of having a self-tapper and then a sharp edge sticking on the inside, what I'm going to have to do is get a nut and bolt and some of them are going to be like 
down in there, I'm not going to be able to get a drill from that side, so I'm going to have to measure out the inside, drill them as close as I can to where they need to be. But yeah, there we have it. Quite a few bits of modifications too. Uh, but what can you do, you know, for the money? It's a little bit disappointing, especially with things like the rib nuts. You know, every series Land Rover has them. So I'm not sure why they're not included. Some bits I know, they're optional. And then, uh, yeah, these bits down here as well. Being a bit too long, you know, too slack on the tolerances. Bit annoying, extra work. It's not a big deal, but it is annoying when you pay nearly £2,000 for it and then you've got to do additional work on top. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna think I'm going to end this bulkhead video there. Not much else to tell you about it. I'm sure as I go later on, I'll find more things. But, uh, yeah. There we are. If you've liked the video, you found it informative, sort of an uh, initial review of the shield of bulkhead, then please like and subscribe. Uh, any questions, you can ask in the comments. I'm due to go away now on back on shift. And you'll probably see this video just before I come back. So if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see, I will be back on land by then and you'll be able to well I'll be able to demonstrate I've got my old bulkhead still for reference to take uh, measurements and all that. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching.